Welcome back to the channel. I've spent my entire week with this 2025 Lexus UX 300H. Now this Lexus is powered in part by a hybrid system. It is a mild hybrid system, so no plug-in here, but we do get a slight performance boost for the 2025 version of the Lexus UX, which I think is a really, really helpful thing to help this thing kind of get on the road with a little bit more. Because I think people found last year in 2024, it just didn't have enough pep in its step, but this year they've kind of fixed that. So I'll take you through all that, but of course we're gonna do the exterior, the interior, and of course a POV drive. Let's get right into it. So first up, as usual, we don't have much sun here, but we do have a very nice front end. I do have the F-Sport 1 package, which does give us a little bit of nice exterior bit. So I've got the F-Sport front grill right here, as well as later on in the video, I'll show you the 18-inch F-Sport rims that we've got as well. But we do have really nice daytime running LEDs right here. There's no parking sensors, no front-facing camera on my trim because like I said, the only add-on that I have is the F-Sport package number one. So it's, it's pretty much the base model other than that fact. But I like the, the Lexus front end. It looks very iconic. It's kind of the one that you're used to seeing. Not a huge change from last year, but honestly you don't need to because paired with this really nice paint color, it looks like a really aggressive and nice front end. So let's take a look at what is under the hood. We have a two liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine, and we've also got two electric motors powered by our mild hybrid system here. So that combined gives us 196 horsepower, 139 pound feet of torque. It's also got an eCVT and it is the all wheel drive version. Now, like I said, I've got the F Sport package, which comes with the F Sport front grille, 18 inch F Sport alloy wheels. And we also got LED fog lamps and LED corner lamps. My as tested price here in Canada is around $48,000 Canadian. So let's move quickly to the side profile where you can see how compact this is. Lexus have really tried to fit into the subcompact crossover luxury SUV market. And you can see with this entry here, it is affordable. All things considered above or below $50,000 Canadian is affordable nowadays. That's just kind of how things are going. And I think it's cool. Like I will show you the interior. You will see how much room we kind of do have in the back, but let's take a look at these 18 inch F Sport wheels. Very nice. You can see they pick up the dirt quite a bit. You can see that it, it splashes dirt quite a bit here and it does show on the paint. I was hoping it wouldn't, um, but just for transparency, it does a little bit, but you can easily clean that up. Uh, it's, it's really not that hard to do, but really like the rims here. We've also got our F Sport badge right here as well. I like the turn signal LEDs as well as kind of the black on top of this copper paint job that we've got done here. It's just a really cool looking vehicle. It turns a lot of heads. People like to look at it. And it's, um, it's, I like it. I, surprisingly, in the sun, maybe it looks like a Duracell battery color a little bit, but I actually really like it. So quickly, last but not least, we are going to go over to the back of the UX300H. It is a nice place to be, uh, a clean rear end. I really like the kind of light bar that we have here. There's no crazy kind of exhaust. You can see it's not hidden, but you know, they're definitely not showing it off as well. Again, no parking sensors, but we do have a backup camera that is going to be standard on all your models. You can see we have the all wheel drive UX 300 H logo right there, classic Lexus logo. So let's open up the trunk. It is not an automatic tailgate, but for the price, it's hard to complain about that. So this is where it's kind of interesting, right? Cause it's a decent amount of space, but it is on the smaller side for some of the other compact crossovers that we've taken a look at this year. But if I look under the floor right here, check this out. I've actually got like a ton of more room. So you could actually remove this piece of the, this piece of the floor and just have a whole bunch of trunk space. It's kind of interesting that they did that. But I guess if you wanna like, if I was to maybe drop my stroller in here, I'd probably need to remove this just so it fits with this. But this is this part here is also removable, the privacy screen here as well. So that you can kind of make it work. You can kind of make the trunk space a little bit bigger with the removable floor. And I also do really like this carpet, the F-Sport UX badge, very nice touch. So there you go for our exterior tour of the Lexus UX 300H. Let's hop in the interior. I'm gonna show you the rear space and then we're gonna take a look up front and of course POV drive, let's get into it. Okay, first up as usual is the rear seat for the UX. So there's not a lot of split of materials going on here with the door. It's this big kind of thing of plastic and a little bit of leather here with a nice kind of armrest touch. And you wonder why I'm on the passenger side when usually I'm on the driver's side. Well, that's because if I sat behind my driver profile, I would be pretty uncomfortable, but I've moved the passenger seat up a little bit so I can fit inside here. So let's go ahead and hop in. So with the passenger seat, the way it is, you can see my knees are still kind of touching it. 
uh, but I'm not uncomfortable. I have just enough headroom back here as well, but it definitely is a, it definitely fits the compact segment that it is in. I mean, it really does. Uh, I could probably do a road trip back here though, only because these back seats, like the front seats, are really, really comfortable. Lexus has definitely paid attention to the material and their cushioning for the seats. It feels like a couch. It's very, very good. So if I had this amount of space, you know, I would probably need some frequent breaks on a road trip, but I could do it. I've also got vents and two while in two USB-C ports right there. So yeah, pretty standard stuff though. Not a lot going on. This guy folds down obviously, and you get your cup holders and a little armrest should you want it. But yeah, uh, if I was to sit behind myself, there's no way that that's just not comfortable or really doable for me. So, you know, it is on the small side. So you're gonna have to keep that in mind, but there's plenty of room up front. So let's hop up there. All right, next up is the front seat. So let's check out the business end of the UX here. So you can see it is a pretty big slab of plastic here with, again, a nice little leather armrest, which is very nice. Let's take a look at the seats. One of the best seats that I've sat in all year. They've really paid attention to the material and the cushioning, like I said, in the back seat. Very good job compared with the ride quality that's in this UX. These seats are class leading. I really like it. It lives up to the part of Lexus that wants to be luxurious. These seats definitely do it very, very well. But let's hop in and close the door. Very easy to get in and out of the front seat. You're greeted by this very standard steering wheel, the Lexus logo, classic as always. I'm a fan of it, I like the logo. We've got our cruise control options here on the right-hand side, and then our media control and our gauge cluster control here on the left-hand side. All the way to the left-hand side with the odometer trip and the illumination controls. Like I said, not a lot of stuff going on over here material-wise. You do have a little bit there where the vent is, so that's nice. Then we've got our little drive mode selectors. You can see it'll change the theme a little bit for our gauge cluster. I've got an eco, sport, and normal, and I've got also a dial for the traction control as well to turn it on or off. And I do, like I said, have a little bit of a digital gauge cluster. I usually leave it on this one, which is the energy monitor, so I can see what the battery and the engine are doing, what's powering where, but I can kind of flip through this. It's very standard stuff. There isn't a lot that you really need to display with this car, so you know, I'm not really looking for a whole lot of different themes or anything like that. It's not something that I think the, the general buyer for this thing is really looking at anyway, so this is, this is perfectly fine. Then we move over to our digital infotainment. It is on the small side, but you can get an upgrade for a little bit more money, and you can get kind of a bigger screen and different things like that. Uh, you can also get a wireless charger in here if, if you upgrade. I don't have the package on my tester, so I am kind of stuck with this relatively small screen, but it doesn't bother me because I have got the wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. I'm pretty happy. You can add the navigation that's built in, but I can kind of, you know, flip through these different things here. It's, it's a very basic system, uh, but honestly, I like it that way. You don't need to overcomplicate it. It's a uh, hybrid, and that's pretty much all you need to care about. You can change some of your your blind spot stuff, your comfort stuff you can change from here, you can change the climate from here, you can access your media, your phone calls, different vehicle settings as well, you can kind of change it all through here, so it's very standard. It's kind of the standard uh, new age Toyota system that we're all used to. I like the power button right here for the start stop. Dual zone automatic climate control, very nice. Uh, all a bunch of physical buttons to control it, so we like that. There's no wireless charging pad right here, it's just a storage, as well as two USB ports, two USB-C ports, and then we have the cup holder, standard stuff, and then we have this interesting shifter. You can see all the shift patterns right here, where it's kind of like, you know, hold the brake, and the, well, I won't hold the brake because I don't want to drive, but you kind of go to the left and then down for drive, up for reverse, and then hold to the, to the left for neutral, and then the B mode is for the regenerative braking. And then when I want to go into park, I just press the button, very easy. And then I also have heated seats, heated steering, and ventilation at this price point. Very, very nice to see that. EV mode button as well. A little bit of storage in here, not too bad. I don't mind the way this thing opens, it's perfectly fine. I like the split of the material here on the dashboard. It's a nice little touch, splits up, you know, kind of the big, you know, the plastic that we have over here. And like I said, passenger seat, just as comfortable. They're both powered, very nice. Uh, yeah, it really does live up to the segment. I think the steering wheel and the, the seats are my favorite part of it, and it's the part that gives me the luxury vibes the most. Got a sunroof too, can't complain about that. Kind of the manual cover here, but that's no problem. Then we got the sunroof controls right up there. So overall, not a really big interior to complain about. There isn't a lot of space on, in the rear, and there isn't a lot of space in the trunk either. So you're really gonna have to take a look at this thing personally and figure out, does it fit your needs and can you live with it? Maybe if you're like a, you know, a single child family or, or uh, you don't have any kids and, and this could be plenty of space for you, that, that is possible and then you kind of get it get to get into a Lexus at maybe a lower price point. I know 48 grand is, is still quite a bit, but still it, it's low for the, the brand. It, it's low for the logo. Um, 
so yeah so far i feel like the seats and the steering wheel and the ride quality and stuff like that lives up to it maybe no, not so much in the rear of the kind of luxury segment but i do get maybe a little bit more luxury vibes from this than say something like a uh, same price toyota but i know that people say that you could take all that you can spec this out fully and still get um you know a fully loaded toyota corolla and that is also an option but i don't know i i do think that Lexus does things that are quite nice here. So with that being said, let me throw that GoPro on my forehead and let me tell you how this thing drives. All right, on the road now, Lexus UX 300H. Let's do it. So it's been a really like comfortable week, a very easy week. You know, I really, I, I honestly haven't visited the gas station at all since the beginning of the week. And I still have, how much kilometers do I got? I still got 370 kilometers and I started with 600. So about a little bit uh, more than half. So that's good to know. Uh, I, you know, I think that's pretty decent. I think that's also aided by the fact that I do a lot of city driving, and you know, the hybrid kind of takes over. And I usually drive in this B mode, which is actually going to be a little bit of regenerative braking. Like I always have this screen up here, like I showed you before, where it's kind of telling me what the powertrain is doing. So right now, I can see that the motor is powering the battery, but now it's the electric powering the battery. So it's like you know, you can or the wheels actually. It's, it'll tell you what is powering it. So it's either the engine's gonna power the wheels or the electric motor's gonna power the wheels. Right now it's doing both. It's giving power to the wheel and the battery. So you can kind of get a good idea for that. But I guess the question is, did Lexus do enough with their price point to kind of make a subcompact crossover luxury SUV affordable, but also make it worthwhile? And I think like under $50,000 is a pretty decent way to start. And I mean, you can even drop the price lower if you remove my F Sport package, it maybe gets a little bit more into those low 40s, which is pretty good. In terms of power, like I said, we do have a little bit of a bump, so I'll shift it into sport mode. Um, it is a slight bump though, but I, again, I think it's a very nice and welcome bump compared to last year. So let's give it a little bit of gas here. Definitely got good pickup. Hey, you can approach highway speeds with this thing, absolutely no problem. I mean, it doesn't push you back in your seat. It doesn't excite you or, or do anything like that or shift aggressively. But it's, the, the, the thing is, is, it's not meant to do any of that. It's just meant to be a really decent and easy to use daily driver that can get up to speed without you being like, oh my goodness, am I going to pass this person on time? You know, or am I in the way too much on the fast lane on the highway? None of that's going to happen. With just near 200 horsepower and all wheel drive, you are perfectly fine. Also, you'd be pretty well set in the winter as well. Not sure how well the, the hybrid battery would do, but for just driving in general and, and just stability and stuff like that, the all-wheel drive is going to be a very welcome addition this year or just to have in general. Visibility is very, very good. No complaints at all. I really don't have any huge blind spots. I can see the road very well, very big windscreen. The pillars don't block my view at all. There's no 360 degree camera. There's also no parking sensors, but still, you're small enough where if you don't want to option that and you don't want to spend the extra money and get like the luxury package which would give you like a bigger screen and stuff like that wireless charger would give you as well as well as the 360 and the parking sensors if you don't want to option that because you just don't care you're going to be okay this thing is not hard to park at all it's small and compact which makes it also good for things like city driving right so you, you know so you're somebody who lives in the city you don't really want uh you know like a on a fit uh, you maybe have a bit more of a budget for something else well then you could easily get one of these and it'd still be pretty nice. So let's see, what was my efficiency? That's my trip average, it's right now. I've been idling a little bit. So my fuel economy, I've done like maybe over 400, 450 kilometers by this point. And my average fuel economy or my total average fuel economy is 6.1 liters per 100 kilometers. And for an SUV, that's pretty decent. I think that's pretty good. I, I think, uh, you know, <laughs> Obviously, with more city driving, maybe if I was stuck in traffic more often on the highway, which is a good thing I'm not, but maybe if I was, that number would probably come up just a little bit more. So see now, like I'm taking my foot off the gas and I can feel the car slowing down for me quite rapidly, actually. It's not a true one pedal driving experience. It's just kind of like a lift and coast and it will kind of slow you down, but also give a little bit of power back to that battery, which is always important when you're driving a hybrid vehicle such as this Lexus. So. You know, I, I think um, I think Lexus has got a good package here. I do think that it is sort of enough to kind of justify it. I, I think anything under 50K is a steal. It is an absolute slam dunk. Uh, I, obviously, I, really, I wish we could have had the bigger screen, something like that. I wish you didn't have to pay more for that because, you know, 
upgrading to the luxury package doesn't necessarily give us more space. And I feel like that's the main place where the UX is lacking is, is in rear space and leg room. For me, it just wouldn't be enough to live with on a daily basis. Same thing with trunk space. I don't think that you know my plans possibly to have another child in the future. I don't think I could fit all of the stuff I need to in this vehicle. I would definitely need to upgrade to a full-size SUV if I was to stay with maybe one child. There's a possibility of it, of it working. You could make it work, and, and if you could make it work, then you're getting a really decent packaged vehicle for like a pretty decent price as well. And I think the fact that this is just a simple hybrid and not a plug-in really removes the headache, the hassle from a lot of people. Like the battery will take care of itself. You don't really have to think about it. You can drive it like a normal gas car. You gas it up when it needs fuel and that's it. You don't have to worry about your range. Whereas a plug-in, you know, it's more or less, you're gonna have to worry about it. You might have to plug it in, you know, if you want your most efficient range out of it. This is always gonna give you the best range it can because it will always have some type of charge in the battery because it monitors and manages itself. You can see here, as I let off the pedal a little bit, it just takes the power from the battery to keep the wheels going, which I think is really neat. I will say I was really surprised to see that I had heated as well as ventilated seats. At this price point, not something you always see, but I'm very glad that Lexus have included it here in this model. And you know, a really good, a really good place to start in terms of electrification. I think that you know the market for EVs is good, but I feel like hybrid is the way to go. I feel like the world is ready for hybrids and possibly plug-in hybrids. But the full electric stuff going on road trips, especially if you drive a lot, I don't know. I just feel like the infrastructure isn't there for all of that yet. So I think still the best option is to buy a hybrid. And I think you know Lexus have, have done a good job in, in making this hybrid quick enough, all-wheel drive. You know, you got your luxury features. These seats, let me tell you, the ride quality in these seats are incredible. The ride quality in general is really, really good. Really, really surprising. I expected a lot more stiffness. I expected them maybe not to invest so much into the ride quality stuff. It's getting really dark. Daylight savings time is a uh, son of a gun. Uh, but anyways, we'll try to wrap this up quick. I just think the ride quality is really good and it's aided by the seats. The seats are phenomenal. They are best in class in terms of uh, compact luxury crossover SUVs. You that sentence is always weird, but it, it's number one in terms of small SUVs. Oh, there's a nice one. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's just so good. And it's aided by the seats. You know, it's not all in the dampening. Sometimes your seats have something to do with it as well. So as I lose my light here, overall, I think that they've done just enough. I just wish it was a little bit cheaper. Maybe a little quicker would be nice. And, and maybe just have like a big screen as a standard and you've got an absolute home run slam dunk out of the park, whatever you want to call it, you've got it. I think that's the only thing that's missing here with the UX. But overall, I liked it. Let me know what you think. Let me know, do you own one? Are you waiting for one? What is your situation? And do you like the one that I was able to show you in the video today? And with that being said, make sure you like, subscribe. I'll see you next week. See you next car. Take care.